start to an HTV clip. I'm actually sitting in Gatwick Airport. I'm off on holiday with my girlfriend to Grand Canaria. I've got four days carp fishing up in the mountains and a couple of days chilling on the beach. I'm going over there with a company called Costa del Carp and they can accommodate all your carp fishing needs, whether that's just a, an afternoon or a day's fishing, right up to a week or two with all the kit provided. Now Grand Canaria is not the first sort of place you'd think of for a carp fishing holiday, but you know when you sort of balance it up against the Costa Gana of the south of France, there's not a lot in it guys and the, and the fish are getting really big and it is a beautiful country. Anyway, I'm going to go and get checked it now. Look, really looking forward to it. Going to have a nice cold beer wait when I get there and have a look over the lake and, and see what the crack is for the next few days. Like I said earlier, you know, they can completely accommodate any carp fishing needs. It's a packed little place, you've got all your sort of home amenities, your shower, double bed, cooker, fridge, freezer, etc. I think rather than rushing and getting the rods out tonight, I'm going to spend a bit of time getting my gear sorted, get all my rigs done, ready for a nice early start in the morning. Once I've got this lot sorted in here, I'm going to go and sit out by the lake for an hour or so, see if we can see anything moving. First morning of our stay, we just popped over to see Dave and he's got one in the sack. You can see what they're doing the western side over here, can't you? Real clean Eastwood territory. Right, Dave's picked us up in the Jeep, we've got all the gear inside, we're going off round to the swim, fishing a beautiful bay, loads and loads of features. When I say a bay, it's actually a huge expanse of water, probably 20 to 25 acres, it's absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, the sun's up nice and high now, it's absolutely blazing off. I'm going to stick some shorts and a proper t-shirt on, go and soak up the rays and get the rods out for the afternoon. I'm going to be using a lot of particle, fishing with the monster squid boilies, see what the afternoon brings along. This part of the lake, because it's all private here, doesn't get busy. All the other side, it gets like Margate. So where we have it, look at that for a view. Absolutely stunning. This isn't even the main body of water. It actually goes right out through that channel at the back there into the, the actual main lake. Let's go down to the swim and have a look. Yeah, she's good, she is. First afternoon here in Grand Canaria, and I've just had this cracker. I 
I've also had my first fish of the trip, not quite as big as Chloe's. It's a small black bass. <laughs> Caught it on a little spinner and they're keeping me quite amused while I'm waiting for some of the better carp to come along. There's loads of these in here, right up to about seven pounds. Really awesome little fish. I'm gonna get this one back and have a go on the spinner and see if we can get any more. Whoa. <laughs> I'll get in the boat with you, so if he does. Half hour early, mate. Second run of the trip. Second run of the trip. Weather's absolutely glorious. And right. this one's just ripped off. Dave's just getting the boat sorted in case I need to go out. The problem I've got here, if you look at my reel, I'm right down to the spool. I've got no line whatsoever. This is because we're fishing about 130 yards out against this margin over the back here. Bait ain't been in the water long. Fishing over a big bed of particles with solubles. But on the hook, I'm actually using tiger nuts. And this is because Dave and his clients over in Grand Canaria have had quite a lot of problem with the turtles. Now in the water here, you've got these snapping turtles and they're an absolute nuisance for taking the boilies off the air. I've given the tiger nuts a go today, but I think tomorrow, I'm gonna get on the mutant boilies. And these are the plastic baits. I don't think the turtles will be able to do anything with them. Three tiger nuts over a nice bed of particle. And everything's been soaked in a monster squid dip. First afternoon of fishing, Close had, Close had a lovely fish about an hour ago. This is the second one, 24 pounds. Look at the scales, absolutely stunning. They don't get a lot better than this. I'm gonna slip this one back, get the bait back out on the spot, and hopefully we'll have plenty more action tonight. It really is a special place over here, just look at that. Let's get it slipped back. There it is, there's the rig, three tiger nuts. Uh, Fang Twister, he's absolutely nailed again. Um, I'm using the Armour Link hook link, which is extremely abrasion resistant. And on here I've got a weed safety bolt with it. And as you can see, I've dropped the lead on the take. And this is really important when you're fishing in these sort of rocky, snaggy situations. You want that lead dropping off straight away. As you can see, we're getting well looked after on Canary Island carp fishing tours. Dave's just brought us around a puck of dinner consisting of chicken, roast potatoes, veg, corn on the cob. Can't wait, looks scrumptious. <laughs> Gonna get this down us and then watch the sun go down and hopefully catch a few more fish. It's just gone midnight and I've just had a fish. Not just any fish, 44 and a half pound, absolute stunner. It was from a rod that was fished about 130 yards up against the big cliff face on a sort of shallow plateau. It absolutely melted off. Managed to get there quite quickly, got out of the bivvy, ran round, no shoes on, grabbed the rod and into the fish. But soon after it sort of locked up and I could feel it grating on the rocks. I kept steady pressure on it and it eventually come free. That just shows the testament of these diffusion camo leaders. They really are up for the job. Anyway, big battle, eventually got it in the margins. It kicked up a fuss, stripping loads and loads of line off. And eventually Chloe stuck it in the net and I'll tell you, I just let out a cheer and it sort of echoed around all the mountains. I was absolutely over the moon. Anyway, I've unhooked it. I've slipped it in the sack. Uh, like I said, it's just gone midnight, so about four or five hours. Just as the light's coming up, we'll get it out, we'll get some proper photos. See you in the morning. It's Chloe's turn this time. Another rod's melted off. She's jumped straight out and hooked into it. By the time I got the camera, managed to gain quite a bit of line, but it's still out there somewhere in the depths. It's mad really, like the spots we're fishing are between sort of six foot and 15 foot deep, but right out in front of us in this main body of water, it goes down to about 30 foot, so. Once you get them into this deeper water, they do like to scrap a bit.
morning's finally come round and we've had an amazing night's fishing. We ended up with four takes, landing two of them. You're bound to lose some, but that's fishing. Anyway, like I said last night, I've had a 44 and a half pound mirror. It's an absolutely stunning fish. What a cracker. This is my European PB. 44 eight ounces from Gran Canaria. Who needs to travel to France when you can catch fish like this? Absolute clunker. I'm absolutely over the moon. What a creature. Amazing. Wow. So my personal best in the night, 25 pounds. Beautiful. It's the middle of the day and the sun's at its highest. I'll be honest, I'm not overly confident at getting a bite at the moment. It's usually sort of early mornings, late into dusk and through the night. So I'm gonna take a couple of minutes now just to talk to you quickly about the sort of baits I'm using. Now the guys at Carp Fishing Grand Canary can supply absolutely everything, bait included. What I've been using for the duration of my stay is mainly particles. And this consists of a lovely seed mix, flaked maize and some tiger nuts. It's proven to be an absolute winner and a few of the fish we've caught have been over tiger nuts fished on top of this. Alongside that on some other spots, I have been using a lot of hemp seed and in this case I've been mixing it with the icy one boilies. It's an awesome flavour that I can only describe like a really really good curry. We've also caught fish on this. I've been fishing a snowman rig with a couple of chain reactions threaded down it, going out in the boat, lowering it on the spot and a few handfuls around the hook bait. The final thing I've had a try is the pineapple. Something really, really fruity and sweet. Again, I've been mixing it with lots and lots of hemp seed, solubles, broken up boilies, and I've been fishing a double 15 mil over the top of this. One of the big problems with boilie fishing here is the turtles. Now, I haven't been lucky enough to catch one yet, but I would really like to get one to show you guys. Basically, if you fish the boilies in depths anywhere up to sort of 10, 12 foot, the, the turtles can get down there and actually they'll destroy your hook bait. That's the benefits of using nuts. So what I've been doing is I've been fishing the boilies in the deep water, 15, 20, 25 foot spots. Anyway, let's throw this back and have a look at the sort of rigs I've been using. I've kept the rigs nice and simple. To be honest, not a lot different to than I would in the UK. I'm using the ever faithful twisters and the fang X's. I'm kicking the rigs out of a bit of shrink tube and in the case of the fang X's, I've been fishing them with critically balanced baits. So whether that's a little bit of foam on top of the tiger nut, fake tiger nut to pop it up or pop that boilies. And with the twisters, I'm using the good old blowback rig. Again, kicking it out with a bit of shrink tube and fishing with a little bit of tubing on the shank of the hook. All the fish so far we've caught have been absolutely nailed. The hooks really are exceptional and you know I've mentioned it before we're fishing in real snaggy situations a lot of the time I'm fishing locked up and I've had absolutely no problems with the hooks. I know Dave and the guys out here have been using them for a couple of years now and they can say nothing but good things about them. With regards to the hook link I'm on the armour link. I've got absolute confidence in this as an abrasion resistant hook link. With regards to my leader, again, it's very, very important that I'm using something abrasion resistant. I'm using the diffusion camo leaders and I'm actually doubling them up. So I've got two one and a half meter leaders that I've looped to loop together to give me a three meter snag leader. Again, I've had absolutely no problem with these and many of the fish that I've caught, I can feel it grating on the rocks, good as gold. I've landed every single one. With regards to the lead and the leader setup, I'm on the weed safety bolt bead. Again, I think this is absolutely essential when fishing in these sort of snaggy situations. We specifically designed this bolt bead to drop the lead almost instantly after you get a take. This means when I'm fishing at big ranges, the fish bolt, the lead is used to hook the fish, but all of a sudden the fish shakes its head, rises up through the water, the lead will drop off, and all of a sudden I find the fish up on the surface. This makes landing the fish an awful lot easier. Like I said, I've kept everything nice and simple. I think if, when you come to a place like this, you don't need to overcomplicate things with, with tricky rigs, and you certainly don't need to be experimenting with things you've not done before. You know, be confident in your set, set up, confidence in the baits you're using, and for sure you're gonna catch plenty of fish.
Well, I've just ducked into another fish. I'm fishing right out on that point over there where the rock just sticks off that cliff face. And I've had a brilliant drop back. I'm fishing almost locked up and the bobbins literally hit the deck in a matter of seconds. I've picked the rod up to nothing. I probably reeled him, God, 20, 30 yards of line. And eventually the rod hooped over. It was really strange. It was one of those that I knew I'd had a drop back, there must be a fish on, but I just kept winding and winding, there was nothing there. And the fish has obviously come off the marginal shelf and just dropped straight into deep water and swam towards me. Oh, it looks like another good fish. Real dark mirror. These fish really, really do scrap. There's thousands of them in here. The pressure. It's non-existent. There's a few anglers out here, you know, every week of the year. You know, a lot of these fish have never even been caught before. And they really, really know how to put up a scrap. Look at that. So there you have it, 29 and a half pounds of absolutely stunning Grand Canaria carp. It's brilliant here, it really is. Well, she's really beating me up, powerful things. I'm gonna get her back in the water. She's definitely restless out here. I'm just really glad I got these mats. I mean, you know, the guys have got them over here. They've got a lot of clients throughout the summer and the winter. And these mats are ideal for people not only who haven't handled fish a lot, but just handling fish on this sort of environment where there's lots of rocks and stones. Anyway, like I said, I've been beaten up by her. Let's slip her back and get that rod back out. fish this week in Grand Canera, this being one of them. Had her at about half four last night on the icy one. Taking an hour out of the busy carp fishing schedule to pop up to Lolita's bar. Gonna tuck in some meat and chips and salad. We had a great time so far. It's my last night up here in the mountains. Gonna get this grub down us and go and get the rods back out Absolutely, in the boat. mate. Give it a go. And then down to the beach tomorrow. That's it. Superb, mate. Let's get this down. That's Absolutely great. Absolutely fantastic, Thank you, mate. mate. Brilliant. It's my last night here in Gran Canaria. We're back at the apartment. I'm gonna have a decent bed for the night. Doesn't mean I can't fish. I've got my rods at the bottom of the slope, so I'm gonna give it a few hours this evening. I'm gonna get up nice and early and give it a few hours in the morning before I head off down the beach. Blow me down, I've come down to the bottom of the sort of bay that we're in, doing a bit of bass fishing with Chloe. We've seen a carp and I've managed to stalk him. He's not massive, but it was good fun all the same. You can literally catch him on all sorts of methods and tactics out here, like I said, I've caught him in a nice shallow bay in amongst some weed on a slow sinking piece of bread. Gonna get him slipped back and go and crack on with these bottom bait rods for the evening. Like I said, I'm in a nice quiet bay. He's been doing a few fish over the last few weeks. So I'm gonna go and find some nice spots, get the rods out for the night. Let's get him back. And he's caught a bass. I think he's coming back round to uh, show you all. Just talking to the locals at the moment. Well, I managed to get my carp rods out, and then me and Chloe decided we're going to flip a few little MEP spinners around the bay. Bit of pro bass challenge. We probably had about 15 fish between us. 
This has been the biggest one so far. Absolutely brilliant sport when you're waiting for the carp to come along. Probably got about 10 minutes now before it gets dark, so I'm gonna have another few chuck ar chucks around with a spinner and see if we can get any better fish. Brilliant. They're definitely in here last night. Yeah, mate. Plenty of fish. Like I said, when I lost that fish, I don't know, midnight, probably stayed awake for an hour. Yeah. 30, 40 shows. Amazing. Doosh, but not little fish, proper no, big fish. fish. Yeah. Well, but I think, like you said, with the fact that we've had that low pressure, yeah, the overcloud, yeah. the rain, they're just not used to it, you yeah. know? And it, and it dampens it all the time, mate, whenever you get it. So it must be. Completely different to English, totally English fishing, you know. They love that low pressure in the rain. And... Yeah. But I've had a wicked time, yeah. I've had an amazing time. just trying to work these small spinners as tight to the weeds as I possibly can. There's a heck of a lot of carp fry at the moment and these bass are just gorging on them. You know, the little red mets, it's not ideal but to be honest, they go for anything. I've watched the locals over the last couple of days fishing with little live grasshoppers, just nicking them on the hook, chucking them out and they're getting bites almost instantly. Although I've only had fish to a pound and a half, two pound, there's some huge bass in here. And uh, just over a week ago, uh, a Spanish lad was down here fly fishing and he had one three and a half kilos. Absolutely enormous fish. Straight away, as soon as it hit the water. Yeah. Brilliant fun. Love jumping. <laughs> it's just one, a chuck. Amazing time. Got to thank Dave yourself and the team at Canary Island Carp Fishing Tour, which have been absolutely amazing. Brilliant. Accommodation has been great. And yeah, of course, seven fish between me and Chloe, including the personal best. The X 44 pound, mate. You can't go oh, wrong, mate. can you? Thank no, it's you. been good having you here. Yeah. Yeah, come back again soon.